Pick a number right now between 1 and 1,000. Do you have it yet? The number I was thinking of is 647. Hi guys, welcome back to the Cowboy Slot Channel. This is Brantley and I am here today to clarify a little bit about how the random number generator works as well as answer some of the questions that you guys had in previous videos and comments left below on other videos. So we're going to start today's video off by covering one of the biggest topics that I've gotten feedback on and comments on and that's the random number generator and how it works. There seems to be a lot of confusion about this and I know there's a lot of people that either don't feel like you know the machine is set the way it's supposed to be set or they're just confused about how the random number generator system works. So we'll start and I will make it very basic and we will start from the beginning. Um, in the beginning of this video I asked you to pick a number. Either you got it or you didn't. And that's exactly the basis of how the random number generator system works. All of these machines are ran off of a random number generator. How it works is as the machine sitting here and it's not doing anything, it's not being a play, the computer is constantly cycling through a bunch of numbers, constantly. I mean, we're talking at the millisecond level. It's constantly cycling through. When you hit the spin button, the second you hit the button, it tells the random number, number generator to stop, and then it directs the reels on where to fall to get that payout. So that is essentially how the random number genera generator works. And a lot of people, I've gotten a lot of comments on other videos, because I mentioned in previous videos that yes, the machine does have to maintain a certain level of balance. That is for the legal reasoning. So when the machine is programmed and set up, the very first thing that the programmers do after we set the denomination is we set the payback percentage. The payback percentage is usually a preset number and there's usually about 10 numbers that the casino gets to select from. Those numbers are all legally regulated and it's a legal regulated range that the machine must stay within. Now, when I say the machine must stay within that range, I am not talking about the time that you guys spend to sit at it with your Jack and Coke or your Bloody Mary. I am talking about for the entire life of the machine, the entire, the entire programmed life of it. So if I were to reset this machine right now, it would essentially be starting from ground zero. But I'm talking about the entire programmed life of the machine. And a lot of the feedback I, I got from people was, oh, well, the machine doesn't balance itself. It can't balance itself. It's entirely random. Guys, is it random? Yes, it is. But again, it is not a free for all. These are highly regulated gaming devices. There are thousands of pages of laws written specifically for these machines. They have to balance, okay? The numbers have to equal up. And I'm not talking about the one time that you're sitting there or the gaming day of the casino. I'm talking about the entire programmed life of the machine. It has to balance at some point. Every single thing that is listed on that pay table, every single progressive you see in the casino, whether it's a thousand bucks or whether it's one hundred million dollars, every single progressive, every single payout, it must be possible to hit. That is not the machine, that is the legal regulating committees that decide that. It must be possible. So, now the frequency of that possibility can change drastically. And a lot of that, again, it depends on the tribes and the states and, and every, everywhere that you go. So guys, the random number generator, it is very much random, okay? Even the best players can lose, the, the machine can go days without hitting. It, it is very, very, very much random. But at the end, the machine does have to balance itself out. So it cannot sit here and legally take in money constantly and not pay you back or not pay the player back a percentage. And when I'm saying that, again, you guys have to think on a bigger scale. I'm not talking about the time that you just sit there and play the machine or the day. I'm talking about the entire programmed life of the machine. So if it's something that you're confused on or if you believe that it is 100% random all the time no matter what, it's not just a free-for-all. There are still regulations that the machine has to stay within and has to meet. 
okay? So just understand that, because I know a lot of people were confused when I had mentioned earlier in videos about the machine balancing itself. When I say balance, I'm talking about the accounting records balancing themselves out, and I'm talking about longer term life of the machine. I'm not talking about the time that you're sitting there playing it. So just understand that yes, it is 100% random. You are correct. But also, it is not a free-for-all. The machine does have to balance itself out, and everything on there is possible to hit. The machine could very well go the entire life of the machine without hitting one of those. As long as that pays back and it keeps within that record, then it's legal. So just understand that, guys. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, another question I got, so I'm going to move on to question number two. And by the way, if you guys do have any more comments or questions, you can list them below. I do try to get back to everybody, but a lot of times, especially recently, um, I haven't been able to get back to a lot of people. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people have asked me the difference between tribal gaming and non-tribal gaming. Um, is it different? Yes and no. So, guys, with the, with the casino industry as a whole... Um, every state and every tribe does have different regulations. So there is no national or global standard for slot machines. It's all done on your local level. So you could go to a casino in Louisiana and have amazing luck, and then you go to a casino in Las, Ve Las Vegas or somewhere else in Nevada and have terrible luck. There are two separate entities they have different regulations and different laws and stuff that they have to follow even if it's the same company so let's say there is a casino holding company I cannot say names because I can't endorse or you know talk about any particular uh, casino brand but we'll say if we have a casino entity and they own a bunch of different casinos they own some in Indiana some in Las Vegas some in Louisiana even though it's the same parent company, they still have to follow those local regulations for each state or each tribe or so on and so forth. So um, the difference between tribal and um, non-tribal gaming is, are the regulations written different? Yes, they are. Some are better than others, guys. Um, a lot of tribes, for example, and we'll, I'll get a little bit more into this because some people ask about um, the difference between bingo slots and regular slots. Um, basically, so the bingo slots are class two machines, regular slots are class three, and they are programmed diff differently and they do work differently. So with class two machines, oftentimes they are on a, um, a larger scale network and you are actually playing with everybody else on that gaming floor. And I can get into that in a little further details, but um, guys, the casino industry as a whole is very intricate and it has a lot of different working levels. So just understand that the casinos in your area, some of the stuff in these videos that I'm telling you might not apply to you because they could be tribal gaming, they could be bingo machines, they could be class two machines, they could be skill slot machines. So I live in Wyoming. Here in Wyoming, uh, we only have skill slot machines. We do have some tribal gaming, but there's very few, but we do have what are called skill slots. And basically, it's not a slot machine per se, and actually a lot of times some of them don't even run on random number generators. A lot of the machines, they look exactly like this, but what they do is they pull based off of historical data for horse races. So there's a lot of different aspects and different levels to go into when we're talking about um, gaming. Um, and that's why I said uh, in my video on how to pick a slot machine, the number two thing that I mentioned was know your laws and know your regulations because a lot of it does play a very major part in that. And you guys should be aware, especially if, if you are a professional slot player, as I call it, or if you're a, a player that you go to the casino quite often, you, you really should be aware of exactly what type of machines you're playing on and what regulations kind of go into that um, because that will tell you a lot. So um, that was kind of, I know I kind of went on a little tangent there, but um, I hope that kind of answers your question about tribal versus non-tribal gaming. Again, everything is very different across the board. Um, and there are, some, there are some things, guys, and I'll tell you this right now. 
I'm not here to lie to you, and I'm not here to tell you anything that um, I don't know. If I don't know the answer to something, I will simply tell you that I don't know the answer to that. Um, I am not entirely familiar. I am familiar with Class 2 gaming as well as Class 3 gaming, which would be the bingo machines. But really, I am not um, familiar or trained on the programming aspects of, say, skill slot machines. So, again, it really depends on the area that you're in or... The, the state and tribe. So the person that asked the question about tribal gaming versus non-tribal gaming, is it different? Yes, it is, but it's also very different regulations. Um, the other thing I got meant, um, a lot of people want to see me do more videos on the newer style slot machines like Lightning Links and 88 Fortunes and all of those. And guys, I will tell you right now, those machines work pretty much the exact same way. Um, just because they're newer, just because they have, you know, the fun screens and the, all the games and the multi-progressives and stuff, at the end, at the base, they are still just the random number generator um, and they do function in the exact same way. So there's really not anything that I can do to really go further into that. Um, even though the machines have a lot more going on, they, programming-wise, are pretty much the exact same. Um, Video poker, I've gotten a lot of comments about people wanting me to uh, talk about video poker. Um, video poker, guys, I will tell you right now, and this is personally for me, I don't play much video poker. Um, when I do go to the casino, usually if I want to kill time or get some free drinks, I will sit at the bar and I will enjoy some cocktails and I will play video poker um, just kind of as a time killer. But I will tell you this, video poker of every single slot machine on the floor, video poker is actually the best game to play. Um, and that's from a programming aspect. Um, because it's payout percentage, because either with the, with the hands, if you are a video player poker, you'll notice that typically, almost like one in three or one in five hands, you win something. That actually plays into the fact of the, um, the odds of the machine and everything else. Video Poker actually has excellent odds, guys. It really does. Video Poker is a great machine to play. Um, me personally, I've hit a lot of slot machine jackpots in my life, but with Video Poker, I think I've hit the Royal Flush, I mean, sometimes two and three times in one day or one sitting at a Video Poker machine. They're pretty good to play. My biggest advice for Video Poker is if you are going to drop a lot of money, on it, go to at least a dollar video poker machine or a five dollar video poker machine and play that um, because actually video poker does have very good odds. So for those of you out there that are video poker players, you're actually playing one of the best odd machines in the entire casino. Um, I got the question too about what is my personal favorite machine if I were to go into a casino, what do I play? Um, so what I play is I have a general rule that I like to keep um, to myself uh, in my mind whenever I go into a casino. I do not play machines that are less than a $5 denomination unless I'm wanting to kill time or some of those little games are actually pretty fun. Um, but if I'm going in to make money and I'm going in to really play the slots you know, for the purpose of making money, I will play at least a minimum $5 denomination. That does not mean it's a dollar slot with five lines or a penny slot that plays up to 500 credits. It is a minimum $5 denomination machine. Um, I will play that or then I, what I usually do is I'll go, I'll start with a $5 machine. I'll play, you know, two or three credits, so 10 or 15 bucks on it. I work my way up, I build up, and then once I've doubled or tripled the money, I'll go to a $10 slot machine, and I'll do the same thing, I'll work my way up, and then I go to a $25 machine, and I work my way up. So that's what I do, um, and that typically, typically speaking, I will hit uh, at least a couple of jackpots. I was in Las Vegas um, a couple of weeks ago, and I did hit about five or six jackpots on different various machines. Most of them were $10 slot machines. So that's what I play. And as for my favorite game, I think I mentioned this a couple times, my favorite game is always Triple Stars. Triple Stars to me, um, 
I've programmed them, I've had a lot of work with them. It was actually, Triple Stars was the first machine that I ever programmed, and um, it was also the first machine that I ever hit a jackpot on myself. So I have a spot in my heart for the Triple Stars machines, and those are typically, if you're in a casino and I'm there, I'm probably going to be playing a five or $10 Triple Stars machine. Um, so that's kind of my favorite slot. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the penny machines, guys, because I know a lot of people, um, and I'll explain my reasoning behind this, a lot of people were saying, because I mentioned in a previous video uh, that penny machines are basically a farce, and I stick by those words, and I will explain to you exactly why. Again, everything the casino lists in the, in the uh, everything that the casino lists on the pay tables or progressives, it is very possible to hit. People do hit on them all the time. Um, and I've had a couple people uh, message me and say, oh, well, penny machines can't be a farce because I've won a jackpot on it before. Here's my reasoning behind it. I worked in the casino business for years. Years. I worked on the slot floor for years. I was on the floor for 10 hours a day. And I can tell you this. Of the entire casino, we would pay out and we would be in the high limit room paying out a jackpot on a busy night, probably every five to ten minutes. Okay? We would maybe pay out a jackpot on a penny machine once a week. So when I'm telling you penny machines are a farce, I'm telling you that from the perspective of is it possible to hit a jackpot? Absolutely you can. Everything is possible in the casino. Does it happen a lot? No, it does not. And there are a lot of people that they'll play penny machines and they'll put like 20 bucks in and they get it up to 100 bucks and that's good for them and then they cash out and they leave and they say, oh, well, I made all this money at the penny, at the penny machines, which is good. Everybody has their own method of playing. Everybody has their own um, thing of what they like and what they dislike. When I'm talking about jackpots, I'm talking about taxable jackpots of $1,200 or greater. Um, it is rare for penny machines, guys, and that's why I call it a farce. I call it a farce because a lot of times people will sit there at a penny machine and they will play 500 credits, so they're playing $5 a spin, and we won't pay out a jackpot for like a week on those machines, but if you go over to the high limit room and play a $5 machine, you're spending the exact same amount of money, and the casino's over here, you know, paying out jackpots every 10 to 15 minutes. So that's why I say, um, guys, with the penny machines, just be a little cautious. They are fun games to play. There's a lot of um, you know, newer games out there. There's TV shows, there's things like 88 Fortunes, uh, Lightning Links, all these things are fun and, you know, fun and great to play, but it is rare that they jackpot. If they jackpot for you, that is fantastic. And I'm not saying it is not possible for them not to jackpot because it does happen. Okay? Again, everything in the casino is possible. But uh, what I'm saying is from a worker standpoint, from a tech standpoint, it does not happen as frequent with other machines that are playing the same amount of money. So, if you walk into a casino and you're going to play a penny machine, if you're going to play Lightning Links and spend $10 to spin, okay, that's fine. You can still win. But if you go play a $10 slot machine for the exact same amount of money, your odds are significantly greater of hitting and walking away with a jackpot. So I hope that makes a little sense. I hope that I was able to clarify that a little bit for you. Anyway, guys, um, I don't want to make this video too long, so leave the comments down below. Um, and again, uh, I will try my best to get back with you guys on certain things, um, and I will be coming out with some more videos in the future. Um, again, the area that I live in, we do not have casinos here, so I cannot run to my local casino and start playing for you guys, but the next time I get out of town, I'll gladly uh, do some videos uh, of me in the casino and show you exactly what to look for and so on and so forth. So, in today's video, we covered the random number generator, we talked about my personal favorite machine, video poker, um, the, the new style machines such as 88 Fortune and Lightning Links, and then uh, kind of in-depth on the penny machines a little bit. So anyway, guys, as always, if you guys have a system that works for you, that is phenomenal, that is fantastic. I want you to keep doing it. If it works for you, keep doing it. I just hope that with this knowledge and with some of the things that I've talked about in the videos that you can kind of implement it and see a little bit more 
and uh, hopefully help you out to win a little bit more money as you go along. But anyway, guys, uh, thank you very much. And as always, best of luck to you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share this video, and I will be coming out with more soon. So anyway, guys, take care. Have a great day.